All right, how y'all guys doing? Um, I got a lot of inspiration from a young fella. I'm 71 years old. I've been around a block or two. Um, and all my life, uh, I only associated with alpha males and alpha females. Uh, lions, lioness, kings, and queens. Although, I don't have much, but I can offer a lot of nuggets. And, uh, it took me a long time to figure out that the square life was the good life. Okay, I have three individuals, and I mentioned their name. I ain't trying to, you know, how this stuff go. But uh, I admire them youngsters. Ten toes down. Shout out to you, Kwame Brown. Shout out to you. These alpha males and my most uh he keeps in touch with me email me and stuff montana woke official now these guys different they not the same their message is different but they all come to the same conclusion trying to help somebody and i look at them a lot okay just take for instance ten toes down you tune in this channel, he might throw something. He might holler at you. You know, tell me something. He gonna say it. Tell me. I think he made a video today. You know. And, uh, he said, put it down in the comments. Tell me something. You know. So, um, uh, they got, you know, and the reason I like Montana Wolf, he's kind of like I was when I was coming up, youngster, loner, but I had, you know, people I could count on and stuff if I necessary, if necessary, you know, so, and every now and then, he'll drop a nugget, and he get back, you know, so, um, uh, couple of nuggets that all three of them have in common, I'm going to just put it on front street because, you know, I'm sitting the one, you know, and whatever happened to me, you can't eat me, so whatever. Uh, they get out on this sissy, bonafide sissy, all of them, because this sissy got a lot of followers, and if any of his followers listening to me, let me tell you something, boy. I'm going to tell you something right now. You're following a sissy. First thing bad about that is you following a sissy. Okay. You get caught up in a situation where you have to make a decision. And the decision is based on being carried by six or judged by twelve. Neither one of them decisions is good. And I'm gonna tell you something. I don't look that a lot of his videos. I'm out of H time. And uh I hit ten toes up and I told him it was like a disrespectful thing to me. You know, I ain't talked to nobody or nothing. But ten toes down, he listened to me. You know, we both been in the same situation for 15 minutes. And he contacted uh, Montana Wolf. And uh, he told me, you know, man, you don't need all of that, you know, to make a video. But <clears throat> I'm going to just be raw with it. Um. The guy that they were talking about, he's a sissy in my book. Not in, you know, maybe 
See, cause they give him the benefit of the doubt, but in my book, he's a sissy. Okay, he's a bona fide sissy to me. See, cause I've been around, man. I done been around. Yeah, uh, a lot of you youngsters, if you riding with this sissy, take time out. I think it might be a YouTube video or two. And look up the meanest man on death row. Uh, I was down with this boy. For the first time he come to the penitentiary, they put him on protection wing because he didn't have no hands. Okay. But when he got out and he got with his little brother, I know his older brother, Roy. But when he got out, him and his little brother, they robbed a piece of it. They gave him the death penalty. Okay, now, when they gave him the death penalty, he ain't on no protection. This boy here is dangerous. He turned into a killer, a real killer. He was killing people with pork chop bones, plastic spoons, everything. You know why he was killing them? He was, get, he was killing them just to get an extended court date. That's why he was killing them. That's, in my book, a killer, not a throw. Okay, I said all that to say this. Y'all riding on side of this dude, jamming somebody else's music or something like that. Okay, if you're riding with a sissy, And all of a sudden, that driver's side wanted to break. What you think gonna happen? I'm asking y'all, what you think gonna happen? You got to perform, boy. You got to perform. You know why you got to perform? Cause you gotta go into a protection mode. You know, there ain't no more laughing and joking and stuff like that. Mm -mm. Got to go into a protection mode. Then you go into a protection mode, then you know what happened. When you go into that protection mode, let me tell you what happened. If you don't get carried by six and you get judged by 12, quite naturally, you're going to get a lot of commissary money sent to you. Maybe a couple of visits, you know. But I've been through all of this three times, man. Let me tell you something. It ain't good and it ain't easy, man. I'm going to tell y'all something. I, you know, and this is the Montana, you know. I was just trying to test the water, so I got into that affiliate marketing, and uh, I made a couple of YouTube uh, videos, few, on uh, YouTube shorts, and one of them was about a brown recluse spider. Okay, I did my research, did my homework, I looked into some of them with when I researched it, they wouldn't even say they in Texas. A couple of little research papers that I read. Well, let me tell you about a round recluse spider. <clears throat> you get but one one of them in the penitentiary. Recluse, it means in the dark, hidden, out of sight. You raise up a brick or something, and they pop you. You're in the penitentiary. By the time they figure out they got to get you to the hospital, you know what happened? <clears throat> this pause. 
it just clearly just deteriorate your meat. It make it rotten. And it keeps going. It don't stop. It do not stop. Okay. By the time they decide that you got a problem and they send you to one of them hospitals in that state, whatever one of them penitentiaries you in, they figure out they got to amputate. Okay. They got to amputate. Okay. So here you is. Man, this is just, I'm telling you some of the things that I was scared of. So for the individuals, no. Wasn't no problem. Like I told you. I didn't fool with nothing but the alpha males and the alpha females, and, and I was known for why I even got there. Tell the truth on any one of them, on any one of them, you know, and I'm always going to always be maxed out. Uh, I don't see more killers in the penitentiary that a lot of y'all ain't seen out here, and they was real more tragic. You don't want to go to no penitentiary, man. You don't want to take no penitentiary chance. It ain't good, youngsters. I'm telling you what I know. And filing a sissy. <clears throat> filing a sissy. It ain't good, man. It ain't good at all. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I like rappers. But I also like Christian music. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I even, I cut for Tupac like a rat cut for cheese. But let me tell you something. I don't agree with everything they say. I take the motivational part that motivates me and I jam it. And I ignore what might be disrespectful to some people or some women or whatever. I ignore that. The sound of the music and the beat, yeah, I'll cut for all of that. But let me tell you something. Man, my brother, one of my heroes, was buried on October the 9th, 2021. And I went through and still going through a whole lot. And uh, just hearing from Montana, you know, you just, man, just do it. You know, just do it. You know, whatever. You know, I said, man, I ain't got no cameras or nothing yet. You know, work, work it like I supposed to. And, uh, he he take his time out and he all at me. You know, so <clears throat> uh, I'm not in this for no clicks. Uh, I'm just shouting out to these brothers. Like Kwame Brown. You know, I'm gonna tell you, I lost a whole lot of bags of coffee standing in front of the TV say I got my money on this first round draft pick and I was wondering why this man showing out why is they taking him out so I lose my money but if you really want to know why they took him out he can tell you better than me and believe that that's real believe that that's real <clears throat> when Montana tell you say man if y'all can get out the city get out the city he ain't lying just I can't go nowhere I live on a host road you know I live on a host road but let me let me finish telling y'all about this 
you know, when my brother passed away, had just been to my house maybe a week before that, doing fine, everything. Um, um, when he passed, I got in one of them molds, man, that uh, I hadn't been in since the 70s, and that's bad. You know, one of them don't give a really, you know, whatever molds. And say, man, <clears throat> I was challenged. But I believe in God. And I was challenged. You know, I went in the store to get me some cigarettes. And uh, when I went in the store to get me some cigarettes, this young lady approached me. Usually, these girls on this stroll, they look like movie stars, and they don't really just, you know, they don't, they don't solicit. And it's hard for them people to trap them. But this girl, she solicited, the solicitation to me, so I give her my answer. Now, keep in mind, I'm in one of them modes which is bad for everybody, even me. So she, after she solicited me, I told her, I said, hey, look, you know, you can make a way better living for yourself than what you're doing right now if you just use your brain. So when I paid for my cigarettes, I know that she was standing by the door. So... When I come out, she say, JT. Now it's, it's, it's like a group about 10 feet from the door. A little group of uh, uh, men. They really under the influence of something. Is all I can say. I can't be for sure. Could be alcohol, could be crack. I don't know. But <clears throat> you can't really function properly. Young men. in a situation that presents itself to you when you're under the influence of something. Okay? So, here the dude come and he make about five feet towards me, you know, so I put my hand behind my back. I said, so you the one that, uh, that they sent, you, she sent you, I said, bring all of them. I said, bring them along behind you too. You know, he stopped in his tracks. I went on. I got in my hoopty. And I went on home. Thank Jesus. Thank God. Okay. I'm in that mode. I'm in that mode now. I go the next day. This is how you get tested. Okay. A gentleman. I want to call a gentleman. This is his birthday. He got little old dollar bills hanging all off him. And I see one five. I pay attention to stuff. Not being nosy. Being careful. But anyway. So. Here's what uh, happened. He jumped in front of me. So, quite naturally, you know, I look at him. You know what he told me? Now, keep in mind, he tatted up from the rooter to the tutor. Plus, teardrop. You know what he told me? Don't watch him. Watch TV. <laughs> so, he was in such a hurry to jump in front of me because I'm old. I'm old school. I'm old fool. You know, that's the way I address myself because I'm old school, old fool. And uh, 
he had a backpack and it was open. And it was sitting by the lotto machine. So I step by the line and I just go peep in his backpack being nosy. Really. Whatever you want to call it. So when he got out of line and eased up there real easy and slipped his backpack toward him, then I went and got in line. I paid for my cigarettes and I got on out of it another time. Thanks God. Because what I'm saying to y'all, the square life, it's a good life. But you can't let your guards down. And I understand that, you know, if, if you came up in a street situation and then you're trying to do the right thing and you're trying to live a square life and you ain't going to have as much, I understand all that. Man, I done bought cars off the showroom floor and all that mess. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, when I got out this last time, 2003, Tell you what happened, man. I got out in March. March wasn't even over with in 2003. I found me a little old gig. I won. After I told a guy he wanted me to fill in the gaps where I couldn't fill in the 10 year gap. So I went on and told him, I said, say, man, look here, you know. I've been in the penitentiary, man. I say, so I guess that killed my chances, you know, for a job trying to work. He said, no, not necessarily so. So we hit it off real cool. Matter of fact, he's my fishing partner right now. Okay, so I wasn't making but $8 an hour. You know what I did? I seen, well, these trucks was coming in, and they were dumping, uh, you know, like cutting fluid. And the way they was getting rid of the cutting fluid, they were putting it on trains and all of this here kind of stuff and shipping it out to get it processed and done. I went to the owner of the company and I said, say, man, you got the paper? Uh, I say, you can cr create a water treatment plant where you use chemicals to change that in the water and send it down the drain legally, and I'll be in charge of it. He looked at me, and I said, plus it'll save you money. And I say, I'm going to make it be water if you get the right chemicals. He looked at me, he said, you know, you might be right. It took a minute, but he built that place for me. Okay, so I picked a little guy, Spanish guy. You know, I got a lot of Spanish partners, man. I love them, they, they cool, you understand? When they down, they down, you understand? They just like Montana, they just like Ten toes. They just like Kwame. They down. Okay. Anyway, so much for that. But anyway, uh, I give him the game. I give him the full game. Okay. And I tell him, I say, say man, you know, we get somebody else to work with us. We can't just give them the full game to, with these numbers and things because then they're going to knock us out and we're making plenty of money. And we called each other Slim. He said, okay, cool, Slim. Young brother, 23 years old. So we get on for our action, man. We make things happen. So then his buddy, big old youngster, Cock strong, big, healthy. Slim, why don't you get 
with the college to help us. I say, okay, ain't no problem. I get him over there. But all he want to do is Facebook. Wow, we got plenty of water to try to change over to clear water to try to get it down that drain. You understand? And the city tell the checking on us. We can't send it down bad. We got to work, man. So I approach him. I said, say, man, you just got over here. You understand? And we got work. And you on this, on this phone. So he bristled. I mean, he bristled up real tough on me. So what I'm going to say, man? I'm old. What I'm going to say? You know what I said? I say, little mama, what you going to do? Hit me with your purse? <laughs> And looked at him. You know what he said? Grab me on my shoulder. Come on, man. Let's go to work. You don't live too far from me right now. You know, anytime I need a little piece of change or something, him, his wife, or his daddy. And I still call him little mama, but it can't too many people call him that. You know, he ain't going to accept it real well. So, uh, that being said, uh, this brother, with all of these views, I ain't looking for no views, man. It, uh, like I say, I'm doing this affiliate marketing. I'm dealing with, you know, I do a YouTube short every now and then, but it ain't, some of them might have a little old uh, marketing website on it or something and if you buy get paid or something but most of them like but that spider man I was so scared of getting bit by one of them things and on my unit people was getting killed every day every day Every day, they getting us buck naked in the end there, you know. Getting us buck naked. The next day, there go another one that dropped out. <clears throat> All because, on that unit, if a dude tell you, say, man, find you some business. That's the only warning you're going to get, bro. So... These youngsters, I'm going to just call a spade a spade. Y'all riding with this sissy? It might come down the well. I don't know if y'all just heard, but that was a police that just blow the siren. But anyway, uh, let me tell you this. Riding with this sissy. I ain't tell. I don't. I, you might not be scared. You might not be fearful or nothing, man. But feel that brown recluse spider, cause them people got to get you to the hospital quick, and you got to count on them to get you there. The thing, when it bites you, your meat be so rotten. I was gonna do a follow up on the little short that I did, but after I got to looking at, I already done seen them when I was down there. Before they get these guys to the hospital, I say, well, maybe they got some images of, of this brown recluse bite, you know, on images, on Google images. But man, I say, I'm not going to put that on no YouTube short. It just was so gross. That's how gross it was, man. Different bites, different people. That's how gross it was. So, <clears throat> y'all say, okay, you ain't scared of nothing here. You're riding with, with all of this and all of that. Well, let me tell you something, homeboy. These Houston rappers, when they doing their thing, sometimes they making a video. And when they swinging, and them trues and them woes and them elbows, 
and they swing it, I don't care how close you live. Don't cut in between that line. One time, I went to the store. Once I did get across MLK, where normally would have took me two minutes to get to the house, I had to go back door to get to the house. And I didn't mind that. Because when they in their thing, they in their own thing. I don't want to get involved in that. So, you got Montana Wolf, he going to drop some nuggets on you. You got Kwame, he going to drop some nuggets on you. You got Ten Toes, he, he might throw his hat or anything up against the screen and tell you, get me now. Right now, talk to me. You know, he gonna go all the way off because he know he see he deal with a lot of numbers and it's facts. And uh, a lot of y'all just like a nephew of mine. 